Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Up, we have a very different take on neighborhood, very LA style. Um, so I'd like to welcome the Art Center College of Design to come on stage, and they're going to be talking about a pop-up sensor nail salon. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name's Jenny Rodenhaus. And I'm Christina Ortega. And uh, we're two graduate students at Media Design Practices at Art Center. Uh, Just experiencing some technical <laughs> difficulties with the clicker. Sorry, this isn't working. Ah, there we go. Thank you. Okay. Um, and uh, the observation we sort of began with was really noticing that there's a growing population of wearable devices, and really wondering about you know what new systems or services that might develop in order to support these new devices and the, these new wearers. And so today we're really gonna talk with you throughout our process and kind of um, present that to you. So kind of taking you through our research and investigations in existing services in Los Angeles, um, our early prototypes, and our user testing, which really became this um, pivot point for us and where we um, really developed these new insights um, from our research. So our investigation began um, at an, a nail salon. Um, nail salons are a really important part of these rituals of self-maintenance self in Los Angeles. Um, there's a salon on every corner, and it's a place where you can go and unload and have a great time. Um, so Jenny and I went. It was a two-hour install, and Jenny strapped a GoPro to her head. <laughs> and it started with this fantastic negotiation between us and the nail technicians. And that really turned into small tack. And from that, it turned into gossip. And from that, we really felt when we left like a sense of therapy from it um, and the nails have a three-week life cycle from that life cycle um, you have you return to the salon have your nails deinstalled and then reinstalled going to this nail art salon really opened us up to this um, passionate experimental subculture that's in LA and worldwide so from like really being inspired by this nail culture we started to mix kind of this more tech aesthetic with nail aesthetic. So sensors and charms on one nail. And we also explored like new three-dimensional forms and new sensor behaviors. And from this, we kind of generated a full system of different nail extensions, um, exploring piezos for, and watch batteries for uh, power generation, which is a big issue with wearable technology. Um, as well as how to distribute that power to uh, your fingertips. So looking at sensor or circuitry nails and uh, 3D breadboards, as well as different sensor um, behaviors, like just a simple LED all the way to something more complicated, like a haptic feedback or flex sensor or um, something more aligned as like, um, like space or... Um, Proximity. Proximity, thank you, proximity sensor. So after we designed this set of nails, um, we really wanted to get people into the studio and try them out. So we started the user testing scenario. Here I'm, I'm embedding um, piezo to tap, uh, tap tabs, tabs to Devon um, attached to LEDs, and Chrissy had proximity sensors attached to haptic feedback. Um, after the scenarios, we talked to Chrissy, and Chrissy said, I would use these nails if I wanted to quit smoking. And at that moment, we really realized that it wasn't about what we designed on the nails, it was about the nails giving Chrissy a pat platform to speculate for herself. And so at that like, pivot point in the project, we really decided the nails, it wasn't about nails, it was about designing the space where Chrissy could, could collaborate with people and speculate on what she wanted. So we really shifted our designs from like looking at those nail extensions to more this investigation of the salon or the space. So you know, what are the new juxtaposition of tool sets? And then what are these new roles? So we kind of thought about, okay, well, there would be a manicurist sitting next to a developer. And then there'd be an interaction designer, an industrial designer, and then there'd be a doctor. Yeah, so that you know, he could chart and keep track of Chrissy's progress. So it was really about this combination of salon and maker lab. And so two weeks ago, we opened up the sensor salon in my apartment. 
and here in LA. And so we hired seven individuals for a one day opening. Um, so this is our client, Sarah, and there was such a great educational moment with her. And at this point, she's ecstatic about the possibility of getting an LCD screen on her nail. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, our, um, this is our nail artist. She was a fantastic nail artist to the stars. And she was really interested in embedding LEDs on nails. So we went through a whole demo of just embedding LEDs on nails. Um, then we have our dev and design, our development and design team. Um, it's Marcus and Aaron here. Uh, Whitney um, was the name of our nail artist. Marcus and Aaron here, um, and also Claire not shown, and they helped with 3D printing and coding and sensors and everything. And then lastly, we had a sensor ethnographer. This is Erica, and she really helped us extract, um, interpret what Sarah wanted and what she needed on her nails. And the day began with a brainstorm. Um, everybody came in, everybody introduced themselves, everybody um, kind of explained what their skill set was. And then we went in and we explained what was the sensor salon, what these sensors were, how we thought they could be used. And there was this fantastic like, educational moment with Whitney and Sarah where they're, not, they're very new to maker culture. And they really, you could see the sparks light up when they found out, like with Sarah, finding out she could have an LCD screen on her nail. <laughs> and they just, their ideas went rampant. So in the morning, you saw like the group kind of was convened and brainstorm and together, and then they sort of broke off. So we saw two parts of the room sort of form. So on one side, you see Whitney and our client kind of form, and that became this like install on body area. And then on the other side became much more of like the prototyping and making side where uh, more of the dev and design collected where they started coding uh, the different sensors and sending 3D prints to the maker bot. And then towards the end of the day, it became very much more about the install. So the team kind of reconvened um, to install on her fingertips. And some of the things that couldn't be installed, like say a GPS or the LCD screen, it was really great because we still wanted Sarah to experience them. So one thing we did was have her like walk around the block and watch her GPS coordinates get logged. And it immediately made her think of all these other opportunities for like running, for example. And then another one was a great thing was we we're coding the LCD screen and we we're like, what do you want it to say? And she could just yell across the room and immediately it was just like the code would update and then we could walk it over and uh, make her smile. So this is Sarah's completed set of nails. It's really a collaboration between everybody at the salon and Sarah. And she really got to ex have a say in what she was getting, both on the design and the tech. And another huge part for us about the salon is keeping um, note of everything that she's had. So writing down who did what on her nail, what code was in the nail, what STL files we used for 3D printing, so that her first appointment at the salon and her second appointment at the salon evolve. And then you introduce this upgrade cycle to wearables. So really our research project tries to um, investigate and look at multiple different themes, some of which were you know, looking at a new culture and new aesthetics, so that combination of nail art and wearable tech aesthetic as well as like wearable tech disruption. So we kind of learned that it really wasn't about designing just this one perfect object or device, that it was more about designing this network of people, sensors, data, and devices, as well as this concept of made to order. So we really love this idea that people could like come in and program or prescribe their own interactions, as well as a new service model. So not only making this like physical storefront that you can visit, but also looking at, at this like new type of distribution, making, installing, and updating of technology. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Who wants their nails done? <laughs> <laughs> so look, um, if thank you for presenting one of the best examples that demonstrates designers think differently than computer scientists. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but that's not enough. But that it's complementary. Each is essential, neither is sufficient. And if we only have one, we're only getting half the insight. And I, 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 I love this because it shows a different way of learning, a different way of knowing, but converging. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, you nailed it. 
<laughs> Thank you very much. But, but, but I, I, I follow that with the notion that is that it shows that if you're playing and you're doing something that's almost absurd, that nobody would fund this in the right mind. <laughs> Except they're an idiot if they don't, right? right? Be, because, because in that playful, motivated thing, your mind is free. You're not constipated. You don't have a pickle up your butt where you're so <laughs> constrained about what you're doing that you, you're, you're so serious, right? You're free. And, and the notion that you took this nail thing, I mean, the initial thing of going out was really cool with the webcam, but the, or the, the, the GoPro, but, but the notion of how you went from this thing and said, all of a sudden, we discovered something. And you epitomize, in that example, that nearly all great ideas come as the unintended consequences of doing some, of just pursuing a passion. This intentional thing, we're going to do industry relevant research, industry relevant design, never gets you where you want to go. You got to a completely different place. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I agree with everything Bill said. This is, and I appreciate your reflection on it as a case study as well. I think it should be written up. I'm also going to encourage you and encourage Microsoft to have you have a nail salon next year at the <laughs> research conference. Um, and, and the real reason is, is exactly what Bill said, is it elucidates, what do you think of that? Um, it elucidates the, this idea of, of design and technology working together. That I love that you set it up in your house. Um, the next thing I wanted after that was, um, was the the psychologist because I think you were getting somewhere really interesting with nail salons being this psychological release um, I I found myself asking myself if I went into a nail salon and there was technology would I just think work right as opposed to what I do when I think when I go into a nail salon now and I think total like brain candy read dumb magazines don't think um, and so I think understanding that that our perception of that would mm -hmm. be really interesting. Absolutely. Yeah, I want to echo what these guys said. I think it, the creativity in this was really fantastic, and, and it brought out a lot of things you wouldn't think of otherwise. Uh, I want to get you together with, with one of my former students, Jury Imamura, who did a, a thesis project around nail salons and, and social media um, on a similar subject. But you brought home something that I want to highlight, and you mentioned it at the end when you mentioned life cycle there. You talked about how the, the typical cycle of a nail do is three weeks. And then you're throwing in this idea of nail uh, embedded technology. And then you throw in the end the mention of life cycle again. And all of a sudden, you've pointed out that when we start to think about this kind of ubiquitous throwaway sensors, we're talking about a product life cycle of three weeks. That is mountains of trash. And that's really good to bring that up, because as we look at other technologies that we're developing, we don't see that absurd limit. When we look at something like this, we see that limit, and we go, holy crap, that is a lot of stuff we're putting into landfills, and we start need to address it. So those kinds of exercises, as Bill Point, only really come out in these kind of uh, design exercises, and I think it's fantastic that you did so. So great work. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And I think we have Professor Ben Hooker here, who worked with them, as well as Ann Burdock, and then Phil Van Allen also worked there. Thank you, guys.